John, thanks very much. Happening now, violent protests spreading across the Muslim world. More U.S. diplomatic posts are under siege right now after the killing of the United States ambassador in Libya. So how dangerous is it now for Americans abroad? Also, as the U.S. moves to hunt down the killers, Libyan authorities make at least one arrest. But was it a mob attack or something much more ominous? And Mitt Romney's taking heat even from some Republicans for his harsh criticism of President Obama's foreign policy. Is he ready to dial back or double down again? I'm Wolf Blitzer. You're in the Situation Room. U.S. warships are moving toward Libya today as President Obama vows that no act of terror will go unpunished, his words. But in the uh, grim aftermath of the U.S. consulate attack in Libya, which left the U.S. ambassador and three other Americans dead, there are still serious questions as to which group was responsible. Meantime, violent protests sparked by an anti-Islamic film spreading across the Muslim world today in Cairo. Crowds have uh, again gathered outside the U.S. Embassy right now. They've been throwing rocks and firebombs as police answer with tear gas. In Yemen, police opened fire to disperse uh, rioters at the U.S. Embassy where a security wall was breached. Security officials report four deaths. And in Iraq, protesters stepped on and then burned a symbolic American flag as rival Sunni and Shiite Muslims marched together. Libyan authorities have now made at least one arrest in connection with the attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi. Let's go live to our Pentagon correspondent, Chris Lawrence, who's uh, getting new details on what's going on. Chris, what are you learning? Yeah, Wolf, just in the past few hours, Libya's own prime minister told CNN's own Christian Amanpour that Libyan authorities have arrested at least one man in connection with that attack. He is currently being interrogated and Libyan authorities say they have several others under surveillance and more arrests may be on the way. Meantime, U.S. intelligence officials say they are digging deeper and getting more information about who may have been behind this attack. At this point, they say it does not appear to be a core al-Qaeda group. Wolf, what does that mean, a core al-Qaeda group? Because we've heard al-Qaeda affiliate groups, uh, al-Qaeda inspired group. What does that mean, a core al-Qaeda group? They think it's very possible that this could have been an al-Qaeda inspired group, uh, some group that is not directly affiliated with the hierarchy of al-Qaeda, but does support the aims and ideals of al-Qaeda. And what about the U.S. warships, Chris, that are heading toward Libya right now? Uh, where are they and are those extra U.S. Marines already on the job or are they being deployed? The extra Marines are on the job. One of those warships is now in position off the coast of Libya. The other is en route and should be there within the next day or two. And now the attention is turning with another embassy breach in Yemen today to what happened in Benghazi and whether anything could have been done to prevent it. Was the U.S. consulate in Benghazi adequately protected? The State Department is defending its security plan. A robust American security presence inside the compound. Libyan security guards man the outer perimeter. As you move further in, there are contract guards hired by the State Department. U.S. special agents are the last line of defense inside the hard line. A congressional source says during the attack, at least four State Department security guards and six Libyan government guards fired at the attackers. Another eight to ten American security guards were at an annex building two miles away. We determined that the security uh, at Benghazi was appropriate for what we knew. And just last month, a security briefing provided to Congress found the number of security disruptions is smaller than might otherwise be expected in a post-conflict environment awash in weapons and dominated by dozens of armed groups. A quick reaction force of 50 Marines arrived Wednesday and are guarding the main U.S. Embassy in Tripoli. But a former diplomatic security service agent says temporary setups like Benghazi don't usually get Marine guards. It's not viewed the same. You don't have uh, standards that are put into place 
which includes setback from the roads and ballistic window film. Uh, so when you start looking at these temporary kind of arrangements, it's very, very difficult to kind of protect. He says there were other factors in going with a smaller security footprint. There's a lot of, of uh, politics that's going on behind the scenes with the various rebel groups, who's in charge of the country on any given day, uh, the relationship that we have with the Libyan government, the perception of committing uh, U.S. Marine Corps, regardless of the fact that they're there fulfilling a very specific duty, uh, it becomes very, very political. We're told the investigation into what happened will ask the questions about the vetting that was done for the Libyan guards. Always difficult in a situation like that where you're post-war, but the country is still very unsettled. We also know that several uh, U.S. troops and units around the world have been notified they may be moved to U.S. embassies around the world to beef up security if needed, Wolf. Chris Lawrence watching this uh, important part of the story. Thank you. Meanwhile, U.S. diplomatic uh, missions uh, around the world, they are potentially bracing for trouble. President Obama has ordered all U.S. embassies and uh, diplomatic posts to review security and increase it if necessary. CNS Foreign Affairs uh, reporter Elise Labatt is here in the Situation Room watching what's going on. Sort of reminds me of what happened in 1979 in Iran when there were protesters outside the U.S. Embassy. And eventually, as we all know, they went in, took American diplomats hostage, held them for 444 days. Well, Wolf, um, that's right. But things have changed a lot since 79. As you know, um, now congressional regulations mandate that embassies overseas are much more fortified than they were in 79, and they have a lot more security measures, setbacks, things like that. But the U.S. is very concerned about these type of protests in Libya, Egypt, also hearing about possible uh, protests in Sudan, and we've seen what happened in Cairo. So what they're happening now is they're happening emergency action meetings. Every post is reassessing their security. White House has said whatever you need, if that's additional personnel, Marines on the ready, and working with the host governments. There could be more setbacks, more barbed wire, or even more personnel from uh, the li local forces. And what have U.S. diplomatic personnel, embassy officials, been told to do? Well, in a lot of cases, they've been told, if you don't have to come, don't come to work. Work at home, telecommute, work from a cafe. It might not be so best to have all of our personnel in the embassy right now. And they've been sending out numerous messages to U.S. citizens overseas in areas where they know there's going to be some protests to say, listen, stay away from the embassy. If there's an emergency, we'll come find you. And what are uh, embassy personnel doing to try to calm down some of those protesters and tell them, you know, the U.S. is not the enemy. They've got other issues to deal with. It's a real uh, administ administration-wide effort, Wolf. You know, State Department diplomats are combing social media websites, online sites, trying to counter this negative information about this film, about the Prophet Muhammad, to say, listen, the U.S. is not responsible. We've seen the Muslim Brotherhood, for instance, on some of its Twitter feeds, putting out messages of condolence on one, calling for uh, protests on the other. They're also working with host governments to say, listen, we've stood by you through these revolutions. You need to stand by us and make a stand. And lastly, they're talking to imams. They're really concerned about Friday prayers tomorrow, looking to make sure that nothing gets out of hand. Because in the coming hours, this could dramatically escalate Absolutely. as we get closer and closer to those Friday morning prayers. Uh, Elise, thanks very much. Uh, disgusting and reprehensible. That's how the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is labeling that anti-Muslim film. But can't she convince the Islamic world that the U.S. Uh, can't really do anything about it? and a major move to boost the U.S. economy, what it might mean for your money and your job.